So a little while ago, I made a video where I displayed and talked about a headscarf made by Jeep at Econo Challenge Outdoors. It was called the Amazing Wilderness Headscarf, and I received quite a few comments on that. And I have it in my bag today. I'm likely going to be digging it out and putting it on shortly. But one of the comments, or actually more than a few people comment, on the backpack that I'm wearing. And some eagle-eyed people noticed, and you'll probably see it. Let me see if I can turn the right way and get in. There's a, there's a sticker on it from Value Village and the price that I paid for this as a second-hand backpack. And a few people asked about the backpack and they wanted to know, it, obviously it's an external frame backpack, what are my thoughts on external frame backpacks versus internal frame backpacks? And I thought I was loading it up today, may as well come out. We'll take a few minutes and we'll talk about exactly that. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on external versus internal frame backpacks for bushcraft, keep watching. All right, just before I sit down and take the backpack off, because I, I don't feel like putting it back on again for a while, I'm just going to back up and give you the best of a 360 degree view of what it looks like on me as I wear it, because it's quite heavily loaded, more so than most people would load it, but I'll explain why in a minute. So let me back up, try to keep everything in frame. So I'm wired into the camera so I can't, uh, can't do a full 360. Okay, now I'm going to take the backpack off and before I start taking things out of it, we'll have the discussion about internal versus external frame backpacks. Okay, that's better. Warm day. Running about 27, 28 degrees at 11 o'clock in the morning here in Halifax. 28 degrees Celsius that is. So that's warm for us for this time of year. It's still mid to late June right now. I'm and uh, the warm weather really has yet to hit, so I don't know what to expect this year. It's a little disappointing to have warm weather this warm, this early, and without rain, because of course that means we're back under a fire ban, no fires today. That's okay, I have an alcohol stove. But that's not the, the point of discussion for this video. So what is it I'm trying to accomplish today? Well, uh, I think what I wanted to do was first off respond to the comments or the questions that were asked to me in that previous video, but also to create a discussion around internal versus external frames for bushcraft specifically, and I'll explain why in a minute. It's not my intent necessarily to convince you that what I believe is the right way to go. It's a decision that you make for yourself, of course, and it's going to be something that uh, well, you know, a lot of the time it's based on what are you using the backpack for more than anything else. But uh, I'll give you my points and my thoughts on this, and then maybe that'll help you make some decisions on your own. So, to begin with, the backpack that kind of uh, drew the attention, everybody, is this one. Now, the funny thing is, this is the second one that's appeared in my videos that are kind of uh, Franken-packs, packs that I've cobbled together from other packs that I've bought secondhand. And uh, this one just seems to be, well not seems to be, it is my favorite at this point. And I've got a lot of work to do to get it to a point where I think it's a really uh, good working backpack for in the woods. But what caught most people's attention was this price tag. Let's see if I can get it in frame here. Where is it? Have I got it there? There, hopefully that's showing up. I picked this up um, probably seven or eight months ago at Value Village, our local thrift store, for $8.99 Canadian. And uh, what was cool is there was actually a sleeping bag tied to the bottom of the pack pack. It was tied on with some paracord, and it was tied on so tight that I had to cut the paracord, I couldn't get it off. Uh, when I got it home, I looked at the, ba the sleeping bag. It was an old Canadian military down sleeping bag that had been left to go mildewy. It stank. I, you know, I, I washed it, I put it outdoors, let it blow in the wind, but uh, no, there, there was no salvage in it. So that went, but still, for $8.99, I got what I think is a really nice frame. It wasn't even the, the pack itself it was after, it was just the frame. So what this is, is a Camp Trails, a rather large volume frame. Again, there's the symbol up here for Camp Trails. And the bag itself is old, to, to say the least. I'll, I'll lift it up and show it to you again. It's sun damaged in areas. The, it's faded in other areas. Uh, you know, it's, it's start, not threadbare, but there is thread starting to show through, especially around the zippers and the like. And it was just an old school vintage external frame backpack. So, what, what I, you know, I had one. I had a really nice external frame backpack, a Kelty Tioga, a really nice, Coyote brown, I don't think they called it that, a nice rusty color brown. 
And I had that for years and uh, I let it go. One of, the, one of the things I regret most uh, of selling to somebody, I let it go for what I paid for it, which wasn't very much to start with because it was second hand. I really wished I had kept it. And the reason I let it go is because I found I wasn't taking it out into the woods as the, the way I'm using them right now. Because the thing sat so high on my back that it came right up to the top of my head, the way the frame was situated and the back was attached to the frame. And it was just made it difficult for going through the woods. So I let it go because it didn't occur to me at that point that I could take the bag off of the frame and drop it down the backpack so somewhere at my shoulder height. And that's kind of what I've done with this backpack. That's the nice thing about a lot of these frames is that you can take the bag off and there are multiple attachment points that allow you to drop the bag down the frame a little bit. So I'll show you what those are on this one. It's probably going to be different for a lot of backpacks. I'll tell you what else I've done to this to modify it to date and I'll tell you where I want to go with this. But I'm also going to open that portion of it up to you. Um, I'm looking for some ideas really from you that maybe you can provide me on what I can do to modify this backpack to get it to where I want it to be. All right, so I'm just quickly going to show you. I did show you a 360 wearing it. I'm going to try and show you here. There is points all along the backpack and the frame where little uh, Clovis pins can go through and be hooked on to keep it from uh, falling loose and you can move it up and down the frame. The frame itself still extends up above my shoulders, this portion of it here, but uh, at least the bag is not uh, a problem anymore. However, having said that, the frame is a problem. Those two extensions on the top of the frame are catching on branches when I'm bushwhacking. You know, I'm getting caught up and pulled backwards and I have to take that into consideration as I move through the woods. My intent at some point when I get the right bag, because I will replace this old nylon bag, when I get the right bag is I'm going to cut off maybe five inches off of the top of those, the extensions on this uh, frame so that they come at short flush with the top of my shoulders, but still have enough that I can hook a bag. I could do that now with this pack and I may do it because there's still room for me to move it further down the frame yet. Uh, so that's why this frame. It, it, I think in its day, this was a really good backpack, state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art in its day. But that was a long time ago, I think. You know, uh, let me show you what else I've done to it, and we'll have a little bit of discussion about external versus internal. So the original, these are the original shoulder straps, very simple. I found that the bottom of the shoulder strap came to about mid-shoulder, so the, the buckle itself was kind of not low enough to get in. You know, it's, you don't want it under your armpit, obviously, but it, you know, it just didn't come in far enough or down far enough on my shoulder. So I just made a couple of extensions and uh, lowered it down by about three inches here. It seems to have helped. I think maybe I might shorten that up a little bit. It didn't need all three inches, but I lowered it down. I needed to add extensions onto the straps at the bottom here because uh, getting it on and off, I was literally pulling the strap right out of the, the uh, tension buckle there because it was too short. So I added some straps on that I could get my hands onto it. It did not have a sternum strap, but I just happened to have a sternum strap off an old backpack that I could sew onto it right at the base of the shoulder pad, and that's working for that. The waist belt. The waist belt on this was just that, a belt. There was no padding in the back of it. It didn't even extend all the way around the frame. It just came off of the ends on this, each side. So it was a waist belt that did not support the weight of the backpack like you would like it to do. A good backpack, internal, external, the hip belt should actually take most of the weight off of your shoulders and transfer it to your hips so that you're carrying it in line with your spine and not on top of your shoulders. Another item I found at Value Village was a, I won't speak too much about it, but this waist belt right here. It's actually a photographer's waist belt. It's something a photographer would wear, a professional photographer would wear around their uh, hips, obviously, so they can hang lenses, cameras, whatever else they need to, sound equipment, so when they're on the move, make, maybe a wedding photographer, and they have all kinds of things that they need to move, uh, then that's where they'll, they'll uh, hang everything off. Well, it's great for uh, adding to this backpack. The only problem is there were no attachment points that came with it. So I had to cobble the way of attaching it to the bottom of the backpack so it would stay on and hold the weight of the backpack up. So those are the modifications to date. Now let me tell you where I want to go with it. Uh, what I want is a proper suspension system. And what I mean by that is I would like to have a proper set of, of 
curved shoulder straps that have load lifters because there, there are other bars to work that with that will come down and, and have a sternum strap like you would find on a modern backpack and a matching hip belt that will attach to the frame properly and allow me to shift the weight off of my shoulders onto, onto my hips. Uh, Kelty makes those and I've been looking at, and they're actually not very expensive, actually very inexpensive. If you're interested, I'll put a link to Kelty in the bottom. Uh, the only issue I have right now is that Kelty of the U.S. is not shipping to Canada because of the pandemic. So for, that's for the time being. But as soon as they start shipping again, I'm going to buy a set of uh, shoulder straps and waist hip belt to add to this frame. The other thing is some type of a backpack. Uh, I'd like something that is more like my Helicontex Matilda in design. So an open bucket pack with maybe two or three external pockets on the outside of it. Something a little bit more military looking in nature in terms of design. It doesn't have to be a military backpack. However, if I can find a good, sturdy, properly sized, properly designed canvas backpack or even a nylon backpack that's uh, military surplus, like maybe an Alice pack, then I think that would go well on this frame if I can figure out how to attach it. But the other option is uh, my friend Randall Graham over at Vinland Bushcraft, master blacksmith and bladesmith, is moving into making things out of canvas with some very old sewing machines. And he's thinking about designing backpacks for that can be carried with or without external frames. And uh, so I, I may wait until he's at that point and buy one from him. Okay, that's where uh, my thoughts on this are going. If you have any suggestions on how I might modify this backpack for better use and for bushcraft, then uh, please put them in the comments section below. Now quickly, external versus internal frame backpacks. So to begin with, a lot of backpacks that are chosen for bushcraft are ones that have, uh, they often have a waist belt on it, but it's not for support or, or transferring load off your shoulders. It's actually more for keeping it close to your body when you're moving through the woods. The backpacks tend to be a little bit smaller in capacity, likely less than 40 liters, 30 to 40 liters. You might get them a 50 or 55 liter backpack. That'd be a rather large one for bushcraft. If they're loaded properly, and that means not too heavy, then they work just fine. The shoulders will uh, support the weight just fine. But if you're loading up for a multi-day hike or you have a lot of equipment that you want to take out to wherever you're going in the woods, they can start to become heavy, let alone not have enough room for everything in them. You'll have to end up strapping things on the outside. They just aren't big enough, in my opinion. They're just not big enough for winter trekking, especially if you're going out overnight. You need something that's more of a load-carrying backpack. And that's where the external frame backpacks came in. That's why they were popular. Uh, through hikers back in the day, this was the, uh, the backpack of choice because, well, one, they're not, they're not bushwhacking like I am and a lot of people are when they're trying to get into remote locations. So the height of the shoulders was not an issue for them. It, it was actually an advantage because it pulled the backpack closer to your back, more in line with your hips, and the weight was there sitting on your hips, very little on your shoulders, and it was much more comfortable for long distance hiking. Not so great if you're trying to move through the woods. They're, they're quite inflexible. That's by design and that's not a fault. That's just a comment on them. They're quite inflexible. Hence the, the advent of the internal frame backpack. So the internal frame backpack quite often sits lower on your back. It has a frame obviously inside of the material of the backpack itself. They ride closer to your body and they're quite often designed so that they're e more likely to move with you as you move through the woods. Uh, it, you know, for, for bushcraft, I guess they're going to work just fine, even up to a 70 liter backpack. You can probably move through the woods without snagging up too much on branches. But, uh, you know, most people don't carry that much gear on it, certainly not on a day hike. Um, video creators often do because I've got gear in here that I'm going to be reviewing. I've got camera gear and things like that. So I, I tend to carry more than just the average person going out on a, on a day hike. So what are the advantage of an internal frame backpack? Set a little lower on your shoulders, still transfer the weight quite well, a little bit more flexible for going through the woods, but they're hot. And that's the reason why I like external frame backpacks. In this 27 to 35 degrees Celsius weather and high humidity, I perspire profusely. And 
having a backpack close to my back, I get soaked. I mean, I just get wet all down my back. That transfers into the waist of my pants, sometimes the bound the back of my legs. Yeah, I'll dry, but it gets uncomfortable, to be honest. And the backpack itself gets soaked, so it takes a while for that to dry out. Even in winter, having a backpack close to your body like that, if you're moving and you're generating a lot of heat, you can get quite wet from perspiration. An external frame backpack kind of eliminates that, not totally, it, it reduces that because there's all that airflow. And what I have, the only point of contact with my back, other than the waist belt up my back, is this mesh thing that goes, mesh panel that goes across just under my shoulder blades. And because it's mesh, I do get a little warm, but not as warm as if it was a solid piece of material. So it is great as far as airflow. Now, uh, there is some crossovers and my uh, Osprey backpack has a suspension system, they call it anti-gravity, it's just a fancy marketing term for it, but there's a lot of mesh in the back of that, and that's a great backpack. It's also a very expensive backpack, so one of the things I'm trying to do is put something together that's very budget-minded and very effective and will work for most people doing the things that I like to do, like coming out to the woods. So what do I like about external frame backpacks? You can put a lot of weight in them. And if they're, if they're well set up and, and have a good suspension, they're gonna be very comfortable for carrying over long distances. They are also quite well ventilated around your back, so they're cooler to wear in the hot weather. The downside, of course, is that they tend to ride higher on your shoulders and make it a little bit more difficult for going through the woods. And if you're scrambling over a lot of rock and climbing a lot of rocks, then the inflexibility might be a little harder to deal with than it, might, than it would be with an internal backpack. Okay, that was a long ramble. I think that's where I'll stop for this video and rather open it up to you for comments on your thoughts on internal versus external frame backpacks for bushcraft and hiking, your thoughts on what I can do to further modify this backpack and make it more suitable for the type of uh, woods travel that I do. And uh, when I have more advancements, we'll say on this back, I'll bring that back to you as well. But until we see each other again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.